So welcome to our special interview today here with Dr. Tabor Smith, and he is a chiropractor practicing out of Texas. And I'm just super, super excited to have him here with us today as he is someone who we've known each other for what, it's like seven years now, I think. And he's just been absolutely amazing with his practice. We're going to get to hear from him about growing his practice from zero to th over 300 patients a week in 18 months. Also, how to get interest in, in your practice without even having to, you know, be in front of camera or do all kinds of <laughs> those things that feel, feel like it's sure. all exhausting. And then you'll, you'll get to hear from him about some projects that he's up to, which I think is just so cool because he's really changed the face of uh, the chiropractic profession. And I know those of you here are acupuncturists, chiropractors, naturopathic doctors, and functional medicine practitioners as well. And I believe you can get a glimpse into what it's like to, to really have a vision and, and then um, be inspired by how he was able to to carry that through through um, some different projects he's working on, including most recently film documentary, which attorneys say they are seeking millions of dollars to pay for the growing number of patients addicted to these drugs. I counted 21 prescription medications. Which can actually be impactful for all holistic practices, actually. And uh, Taper here with us today, so welcome. Thank you. It's an honor to be here, and uh, I'm just going to be like an open book, wide open, and uh, would love to share any information that's helpful for anybody that's listening. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about <clears throat> your, sure. your practice and how you, so, how you get started. Yeah. So one of the things, you know, when I say 300 visits a week, uh, you know, a lot of people think that that's a lot. And I, they don't realize that my wife is a practicing chiropractor as well. Uh, so that's between the two of us. And sometimes we actually go over that uh, that number, but we've been able to fluctuate right around 300 visits with uh, both of us seeing patients and um, wasn't always like that. So I, I graduated from Parker in, uh, in, in Dallas and got a job as an associate in Amarillo, Texas. And I, this was an amazing experience because it was one of the largest chiropractic offices in the state of Texas. And I was just a sponge trying to soak up like everything I could learn from the chiropractor who was there, Dr. Shane Hand. He actually still practices there. I consider him a mentor. And uh, so I tried to not only learn, you know, their systems and how they got new patients and how we, how we got great results for patients. Um, but one of the things that I learned um, was how to do you know, talks or screenings or just really kind of give the community a chance to come in to uh, for a new patient exam or for for some kind of experience in our office, and I think that was the most valuable thing. And and I'll share you know how we did that and how we grew that. But I think marketing to me is just like giving the community a chance to come in and see what we have to offer in our office. And that was the most valuable uh, you know piece of information that we got from doing an associateship. But then when my wife and I moved here to Houston, it's been 11 years ago. Uh, then we started our own practice and, and uh, boy, I, I have some big stories for you there when we, when we get to that point. So tell us a little bit about what were some of the marketing strategies that you used at the beginning sure. when it was just a vision to grow your practice? You know, kind of crazy story for you when we were getting started. When we moved to Houston, and by the way, we didn't borrow any money. My mentor, Dr. Shane Hand, he had said, he said, look, keep your overhead low don't borrow money unless you absolutely have to. And so what I did what, as an associate was just save my money. I bought uh, you know, the equipment I thought I was going to need. I tried to buy it you know, used or eBay or all those types of things. As I was working as an associate, my wife and I were able to save up about 10 grand, maybe a little bit more than that. And we rented a office inside of another chiropractic office. He gave me a deal. I could rent one room for $1,000 a month. And uh, so we had that office, first of all, what we did is we didn't know anybody in Houston except my wife's parents. And we asked them, we said, we're going to do a kind of a dinner party, like grand opening to kick off the office, right? And we asked her parents to invite all of her friends and family and everybody we knew in Houston, which wasn't very many people. And we went around to their tables during the dinner party and gave them an opportunity to come in for an exam uh, in our office. That was the only big marketing thing we did to kick it off. But you know, our conversions for that dinner were probably better than any other dinner we've ever done because people just kind of wanted to 
help us get started. So we start our practice. I think we're doing great because we have a few patients coming in. And unfortunately, we were using, that was back when, um, you know, online credit card stuff, we didn't really understand it. And it wasn't as secure as it is today. And we were using an online credit card service where somehow somebody from Russia or something hacked our computer in our office. And the patients who were coming in, they back charged all of their credit cards that we had on file and stole all the money out of our account. So wow. we, here we are, had about 10 grand, maybe a little bit more than that now, because we had a few patients who signed up and uh, somebody stole all of it, including charging their credit cards. So it was, it was horrible. I mean, talk about panic, talk about thinking, what am I doing? Starting a business, this is going to fail. I, I was like, we're going to go bankrupt and I'm going to have to get it. And my back, you know, my, uh, to fall back on my, my plan B was always, I could go back and be an associate again and get a job working for another chiropractor, but I didn't want to do that, but I knew that I, I probably could. And since this happened, I thought, well, there's just, there's no way we're going to come back from this. Now the FDIC at that time, uh, they did insure the money, but we didn't get paid back for that for nine months. Um, Right. after that happened. So here's what I did. I said, you know what? I told my wife, I said, uh, and this, in, the, in hindsight, that was probably good for me because it kind of lit a fire underneath me, right? To like, to do something. I said, I'll, the only thing I know how to do is spinal screenings. And, you know, I know how to do maybe a dinner workshop because just because I sat through the other chiropractor doing it once, but I didn't have anybody to invite to a dinner. So what I did, I said, I said, uh, told my wife, I said, I'm just going to work as hard as I possibly can to get new patients. Every single moment I have and I'm not in the office, I'm gonna go try to find a gym or a vitamin shop or a grocery store or some place that will let me set up a booth and do a spinal screening. And uh, I said, I'm gonna work as hard as I can. And then if it fails and I have to go to work, at least I won't be able to say I didn't try my hardest, right? And, uh, and so I did that. I mean, almost every day, uh, you know, except for the full days that I was in inside the office, I had somewhere to go to do a spinal screening. And what I decided to do was create a, 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 a drawing, like a drop box, like a free dinner drawing. And so I would go to the gym and I would put out my spinal screening stuff with my spine and my table. And I would have a drop box. And I said, win a free dinner at, you know, this local restaurant, which I wanted to do a dinner workshop at, right? And I would, I would screen these people's spines, try to sign them up for new patients. The ones that didn't, I would have them enter my drawing and I would call them back later that night and tell them, hey, we're having a dinner workshop <laughs> next Thursday, would you like to come? And so I would fill up my dinner workshops with the people who didn't sign up at my final screenings. And then every once in a while, we'd get new patients to come in from the spinal screenings. And uh, I hustled. And with that, with, with doing spinal screenings and dinner workshops, uh, we were able to grow our practice within that nine months. We finally got paid back from the FDIC with, that was, it was insured. Uh, we had already built up to about 100, 150 a week uh, in, the, in that time span. And we actually had to move out for, of that little one room uh, that we were renting and we had to rent our own office. And uh, then it just uh, exploded from there. You know, what I love about what you shared is this intensity, right? It's like this determination of, you know what, I'm just going to do what it takes. And I think that a successful entrepreneur, it takes grit. And I think that, that sometimes some practitioners actually come into practice without really realizing what it takes on a, a certain level. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Like, it's almost like, it's yeah. almost like being blinded by law kind of thing. Like sure. I'm going to graduate and everything's going to be great. Or I've you been know, in practice and I should already be, be, um, seeing more patients just because I'm a good clinician exactly. and it doesn't always work that way. And that's a different from a, a practice owner or, you know, somebody who may just, may just go and get a job, you know, is that, that, that job might be out there, but for the entrepreneurs who are listening, like it, instead of just opening a door, or put hanging up a shingle, which, you know, hopefully if you get lucky and patients just come in, that's great. But a lot of times you, as an entrepreneur, no matter what business you're in, you have to fight for it. You really, you really do. And, and sometimes more than others. Right. And sometimes that can get monotonous. It could get heavy. You know, you don't always feel like fighting for it, but I think that's the, the weight that we carry as entrepreneurs. It's like, it's a benefit cost. It's like, I would rather be my own boss so that nobody tells me what to do. And I'd rather go out there and, and 
you know, hit the streets, trying as hard as I could to be my own boss, then that's just who I am on the inside. Not that having a job is bad, but I think that's just a, di- a little bit of a difference there. Yes. And it's the intensity because, you know, for like, you're, you're an introvert, right? Tabor? Right. I am. <laughs> I am. It was hard, but I, I didn't want to just quit and give up and then have that always weighing on me that I didn't give it everything I had, you know? And, and, uh, so that pulled me out enough to say, okay, I'm going to walk into this store and ask them if I can set up a table here, you know? And it, and it wasn't like I was in front of a million people. I, I, I wasn't, um, but sometimes it takes some some courage just to go in and ask that one person, you know, if, if you can work with them. One thing that's really key about what Tabor did is, is really aligning with how can we educate people? And that's done really well through things like talking or speaking. And now you could do these things virtually. I, I was just going to say, I can't wait to tell everybody how we're doing it now because it literally kind of like little group meetings like we're having right now using Zoom, except for... Um, you know, we're able to educate without me having to sit up here even in front of a a video.